The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. So this is episode 125. Yes. Hope on Film Podcast. Freaking incredible. And we here at the Pope on Film realize that all of the listeners of, of, of this podcast right now may not have actually heard all 125 episodes of the Pope on Film, which is a shame because this is an incredibly uh, detailed and nuanced podcast with a number of different plot lines and reoccurring characters in uh, different situations that arc over multiple episodes. And as a result of that, there's a possibility that you might be kind of lost if you just listen to an episode of the Pope on Film. That's why we are starting out every episode with previously on the Pope on Film <laughs> to get you, the listener, caught up with all of the drama and plot lines and general hubbub of the Pope on film. So without any further ado, let's start off the podcast as we always do with previously on the Pope on film. Yes. Last week's episode opened up on a small town in Maine where things looked idyllic. Things looked things looked great. White picket fences, perfectly manicured green lawns, everybody looked happy. Everybody loved living in this small town in Maine. Everything looked perfect. Yes. At first. Then we went around meeting the various people in the town. A drunken sheriff, a drunken abusive father, yes. a drunken single dad. Man, who says Stephen King doesn't have any new ideas? <laughs> you know, when you've got when you've got a good idea, you just write it on home. That's you know? Right. We also met a charismatic Southern preacher who's been getting a lot of followers to his uh, his uh, Southern Baptist kind of tent revival meetings. He's really he's really warm and charismatic and totally not the devil, you guys. Yeah, no, no totally no. not the devil. Uh, we also met a young girl who uh, is very quiet and mysterious and may or may not be holding a devastating secret. That should be exciting. And she may or may not have powers. I'm not sure about that. So, will things stay perfect in this small town in Maine? She did knock over the... Well, the candlestick fell over. Yeah, no. it's unclear at this point. So whether it just fell on its own or whether this small, quiet girl might have some mysterious powers and might be hiding a devastating secret. It's unclear right now. Yeah. But yeah. but does she have mysterious powers? Is she holding a devastating secret? And what does that have to do with the charismatic Southern preacher who has suddenly blown into town and who is totally not the devil, you guys? She's talking to her Barbie dolls for some reason. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. She's acting mysterious. Yes. So, will things stay perfect in this small town in Maine? Of course not. It's fucking Maine. Get the <laughs> hell out of here. I think the real question is, why do people still live in Maine? It's like New York City in the Marvel Universe. You would think after aliens destroyed New York City for the 500th time that it would basically be a ghost town. <laughs> Yeah, it might be time to move. Yeah. 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 But why do you still live here? So why do people still live in Maine? Find out tonight on the <laughs> fun film. So I think that's a good that's a good explanation of the last episode. Did I miss anything, Bunny? I don't think. Uh I don't think you missed anything, but we are gaining a lot of listeners, so these these little sections are important. Yes, we are we are we are gaining heat on the sound clouds. Good, 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 good. So you know we're getting we're getting a lot of followers every day. So thank you all for following us. Yeah, we're, uh, getting a, we're also getting a lot of really good comments on the episodes. And exciting yes. enough, only seventy five percent of them are fake. Yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. Like, I'm talking about uh, Disney theme parks, and then, wow, great song. You know, we're having a contest on this page. You should yeah. go. So, uh, that's exciting. 
Yes. But not all no, of actually, them. actually, we've only gotten like one of those. Yeah. I think we've gotten two of those, like in all, like in, yeah. since since October when we started on SoundCloud. Um, mm-hmm. I get I get a few of them. I get more of them as like private messages. Yeah. You know, and yeah, that's hysterical. Love your song. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a tip off that you completely did not listen at all. Absolutely. But you know, it is SoundCloud, so the odds are in your favor. Yeah. That yeah. it's going to be a song and then there are the freaks like us who who are not doing songs. Yeah. <laughs> but we're getting a lot of likes and we're getting we're getting actually quite a few co- positive comments. Good. Good. Which I'm which happy. like with me coming over from YouTube I'm not used to positive comments. <laughs> before before we really jump into everything, I wanted to mention something, a, a sign that once again we are ahead of the curve. Yes. Uh, Maxwell had his last day of preschool today, and I had the day off, so I drove him to school. And on the way home, I was listening to NPR's On Point, which is an hour-long show. Uh, every weekday where they focus on one topic. Yeah. And today's topic was about the new Netflix show for teens, 13 Reasons Why, and why this show um, might glorify teen suicide and how that might not be a popular thing, how that might not be a good thing for teens. And it's like, oh, interesting. You're definitely the first person to come up with this topic. That's definitely not something that was mentioned at length in our last yeah. French episode. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And it's so done. We are off to beat bugs now, okay? Yeah. yeah. Beat bugs, motherfuckers. Yeah. Beat bugs. I actually what? watched an episode. My, my curiosity overwhelmed me, and I had to watch an episode it's of cute. Beat Bugs. It's cute. It's, it's adorable. Yeah. And just the music alone, just the music alone, like whether or not you like the episode, at least you're going to hear Blackbird, you know? So so let me give you my critique on it, okay? Yeah. Because I think that this is as fair as possible and could possibly be a rave, okay? Um, I got through a whole episode. It did not bore the complete shit out of me. As, as like, any kid's show would, you know? So, like, it boring the shit out of me is not a negative for the show. It's a fucking kid's show, you know? Yeah. But it did not insult me. It did not... Like, some kid's shows are so fucking stupid and talk down to the kids. Yeah. So heinously. Yeah. You know? And this show didn't do it. It was just a... Nice, cute little show for kids. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's cute. You know. Yeah. It's not. It's not the best. It's not the worst. But I mean, it has Beatles music, so that yeah. right there makes it slightly above the. Yes, Maxwell. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Uh, what? There's a special guest? I never would have expected that. Wow! Uh, there's a special guest here to interrupt the Pope on Film podcast. Who, uh, Maxwell, my darling son. Uh, who is the special guest? Uh, Mr. Alligator. Mr. Alligator? Are you sure it's not Mr. Crocodile? It's Eleanor. Don't open the door. It's just Eleanor slamming on the door because whenever a door's closed, she wants to go inside of it. Has it, Eleanor turned into either an alligator or a crocodile? No, 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 no. Ed, Eleanor's banging on the door to get in. Max's special guest is either an alligator or a crocodile. Can you? Mr. Can you? Alligator. Do you know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Uh, this is how you tell. Maxwell, the difference between an alligator or a crocodile, if you see one in the swamp, the first thing you do is say, hey, I need to see your ID. And then when they give you the ID, okay. on the ID it should say whether it's an alligator or a crocodile. Okay. That's the only way to tell. That is the Buddy, only way. I want to show you the what... Other, the other difference is one I... has a square snout and the other one is covered in creamy milk chocolate. Yes, yes, there's yeah. also that. And, and Bunny, I'm going, I'm 
We're not recording video this episode, Maxwell, so you can't show him. But there's something inside the alligator? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What's inside of the alligator? A car. He ate a car? He ate a car? Wow. He ate a car. Well, thank you, alligator, for being on the show. Thank you so much for being a special guest. So, real quick, Al Bundy, real quick, before we dive headfirst into our weekly doorway of randomness, there are two things, two uh, teeny-weeny, itty-bitty, titty-committee little things that I wanted to mention in the last two episodes, but I just forgot about. Yeah. So these are, this is something I wanted to mention during the Sandy Wexler episode, and then I forgot, and then I tried to remind myself to say it during the Spinal Tap episode. And then not only did I forget to bring it up in the Spinal Tap episode, but I also forgot to mention something during the Spinal Tap episode. So it's just been building up and building up. So I figured that I would mention them now before we get to like the meat of the rest of the show, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Number one. Yes, Maxwell. Something put his money. In oh, you found a gold pocket. coin. That's awesome. Hey, you're rich oh, now. You someone, can buy and sell someone. You should buy us a slave. Oh, someone, someone, someone got, got it out of the ocean. Oh, wow. So, so it's like sunken treasure. That's pretty cool. First off, just mm-hmm. brief moment. We have to go back to Sandy Wexler. Oh, no. I apologize for that. Um, so, see, um, see, this is why Adam Adam Sandler is like headlights. Okay, yeah. okay. We watch one motherfucking in 125 episodes. We watch one motherfucking Adam Sandler movie, and weeks later, we still can't get him out of our hair. Yeah, yeah. No, I I know, I know. But it it, it so during that episode. Uh, during that movie, Sandy Wexler was living in a rich foreign man's pool house, right? Yes. Yeah. But did you know why Sandy Wexler was living in the pool house? No. Not sure if you realize this. It, it, it's it's all in the backstory. Sandy Wexler was living in the pool house because he was caught stealing a yacht with that rich asshole Logan Huntsberger. you, <laughs> Logan Huntsberger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People, you son of a bitch. Yes. <laughs> you smarmy asshole. I don't care about the life or, and death brigade, you son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate you. So that's number one. Wanted to mention that, and I forgot. Number two, spinal tap. But if you think about it, mm, let's see, I don't know. Is he the one who actually taught Rory how to be a privileged white person? I think so. I think so. I mean, that may be the crossing point right there where she met him. Yeah. I mean, before that, she was just a rotten person. Yeah. You know, with the whole Dean thing, you know? Yeah. So, number two, Spinal Tap. Did you ever notice the Simpsons character that's hiding in Spinal Tap? No. I meant, I, I notice it every time I watch Spinal Tap. So one of the members of Spinal Tap is an actor and a voiceover god, and as far as I can tell in various articles, and it, the um, impossible to get along with asshole Harry Shearer. Right. So he does a, a, a lot of voices for The Simpsons, including, I looked up some of the voices he does, Reverend Lovejoy, Ned Flanders, Cinco the Guard, Space Cadet Wiggly, Principal Skinner, Officer Hawkins, and Jubilee. Sure, four of those characters are fake, but do you know how long <laughs> The Simpsons has been on? 58 years. It's been on for 58 years. Yeah. And in that time, they've developed a lot of characters. So one voice that Harry Shearer does for The Simpsons is generic-sounding radio voice. Okay. So they're driving in the car, and, and the radio is on. You're listening to KBBL. Oh. You know? So he does the radio show DJs whenever they do that. So... That is also the voice that he does in Spinal Tap in the scene where the radio is playing in the hotel and they call the boys in because they're playing Cups and Cakes. Yeah. Cups and Cakes. I'm so full, my tummy aches. And then it cuts to the DJ. Oh, yeah. That was the Thamesman with Cups and Cakes. 
The Thamesmen later changed their name to Spinal Tap. They had a few wayward hits. They're currently resigning in the Where Are They Now file. That's 100% a character from The Simpsons that have appeared a bajillion times, and it's voiced by Harry Shearer, who is in the room listening to himself. (laughs) And it's, you know, when I listened, when I listened to, when I watched Spinal Tap before The Simpsons, I never thought of that. But now that I've watched The Simpsons so much, I watch Spinal Tap, and just whenever that scene comes in, it's like, well, goddamn, yep, that's a, that's exactly what that is. That is a Simpsons character hiding in <laughs> Spinal Tap. Nice, <laughs> nice, Even, nice detective work. 